Hi, I'm Laura Wiesen, along with Rob Carner and Tricia Denton of the Glen Lake Association. Today we'll discuss the concept of a watershed overlay district and the possible benefits of designing one for our Glen Lake Crystal River watershed. Good evening, Trish and Rob. Good evening. Good to see you. First of all, what is a watershed overlay district? Well, I like to think of townships having master plans and they have uh, basic zoning that governs each township. And what an overlay district does is it adds supplemental zoning regulations. In other words, uh, there are things that you can apply to the existing zoning that allows you to have a specific target area like the Crystal River watershed, which behind me, you can see the red line. That's where all of this applies. And then also the goal would be to preserve and protect the groundwater and the surface water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that map that Rob's got behind him there. That's the, that, that's the best way, I think, to tell people about what is an overlay anyway. Well, it's an enhanced uh, set of provisions that fill gaps in uh, existing zoning. You see there's, there's four different colors on that map be, behind him too. There's four different townships. We each have, you know, good zoning, uh, but s slight differences. Um, and this overlay would kind of uh, create a uniform, simplified uh, version on top of that existing zoning. Mm -hmm. So thanks for having the map up today, Rob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. I love now that map, map is helpful. Um, so you're saying it would be one uh, consistent set of provisions that would go across all four of those different townships. We hope that would be the case. Okay, good. So why do you recommend a watershed overlay district for our area? Well, currently the existing zoning uh, is good for most of the townships, but we'd like to make it better. Uh, so this is putting our best foot forward for long-term protection of the groundwater and the surface water. Mm -hmm. And why a watershed overlay district? Because that's how water functions. Water does not function within the boundaries, those, those square angular lines of the townships on the map behind Rob. That's not how water works. Um, water works in a, in, a, in a watershed and all the water is connected. So we need to protect um, all the parts of the watershed because what happens on the land anywhere affects the water everywhere within the watershed. Mm -hmm. Well said, well mm -hmm. said. So would a watershed overlay district prevent development? You know, that's a common misconception and the answer is no. Uh, we expect that there will be development in the next 10, 1500 years from now. We'll always have development. The question is how responsible will it be? How can we be tweaking what happens on the land because if you think about it, what happens on the land is what's going to impact the water because Glen Lake is a spring fed lake and so if we contaminate groundwater we contaminate the lake. So this is really designed to uh, make sure that not just development is, is uh, letting go un unbridled but it also talks about responsible development. Mm -hmm. And I, I think about why do people want to live here? What, it, you know, what are the reasons that people would want to develop a piece of property to live here, to enjoy uh, this beautiful place that we get to live? Um, some of us are lucky enough to be year-round residents. Others are part-timers. But regardless, uh, we come here because of the character of this place. And so development needs to keep pace with that as well and be mindful of um, allowing for that, you know, that personal enjoyment of a person's property while also protecting that enjoyment for mm -hmm. the folks who are developing and for future generations. Mm -hmm. Protecting our investments. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has this been done elsewhere? You bet. I mean, if you think about uh, the New England area, states like Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, they've got their act together over there. And an overlay district is not foreign to them. In fact, it's common practice. And even in the Midwest, Wisconsin and Minnesota, it, they seem to outpace Michigan uh, and value water in a way that uh, the overlay district plays out there, even on the West Coast. But if you think mm -hmm. about locally, uh, I know Trish, you, you're involved with 
knowledge of the uh, the Benzie County area, right? Right, and you know these other uh, places that Rob mentioned too. These are statewide ordinances. They aren't just watershed wide. Uh, they're statewide ordinances. But even the in Benzie County, the Crystal River or the Crystal Lake watershed rather. Uh, has had an overlay district in place for about 25 years. And that's been very successful, very well received, uh, protecting that resource for the folks who love to live there. Mm -hmm. So describe what is meant by low impact development. Well, there's a lot of ways to describe it. I'll just start out by saying that uh, when we get storm water from heavy rains or snow melt that uh, allows for water to have to go somewhere, that we want to treat the water runoff at its source. In other words, close by and not put it in pipes and drain it off to some huge cistern or whatever. So what we have is a, a low impact development that tries to reduce impervious surfaces and you think of the first thing is like a rooftop where the rain hits and it's going to run somewhere or a driveway where it hits the pavement and then it runs somewhere so low impact development tries to reduce runoff and that all those things that rob just talked about can seem really complicated uh, and as a as a property owner somebody looking to develop my property and wanting to do it in a way that's going to protect my investment, uh, protect water quality, be beautiful and enjoyable for my family. Uh, that can seem like a really daunting process to navigate. And the thing with low impact development is it provides a framework for streamlining that process, coordinating it um, for the, both the zoning administrators, your you know, soil conservation district, all those different folks that are involved in that. It provides a, like I said, I can't say it enough, uh, streamlined, coordinated, a real benefit to the property owner to have that kind of a framework in place. Mm -hmm. So I'm a property owner in the watershed. How would a watershed overlay district impact me and my property? Wow, that's a, that makes it personal, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what am I going to have to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that uh, makes Glen Lake so well suited for being uh, protecting water quality on its own is the natural buffers. So if you look around Glen Lake today, in the year 2020, we have a lot of natural vegetation around what we call a natural shoreline. And that's the number one way to filter out uh, impurities, slow off graining and, and runoff and erosion. So uh, we want to look at 20, 50 years from now and say, if we go around the shoreline and we, we watch it from a boat, we're going to see the same sort of natural shoreline uh, then as we have today. We don't want to lose anymore. But that doesn't mean that somebody who doesn't have a natural shoreline and does not have a vegetative buffer, that they're under this ordinance going to have to put a new one in. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they might want to add one because it, it will add value to their property and protect it from erosion and all those harmful impacts. But certainly uh, anyone's existing property would be grandfathered. Um, and we have, we have decent, we have really good um, uh, natural shoreline uh, percentages around the Glen Lakes uh, currently. And it's really important to maintain that at the level that it is and even improve it. So um, as a current property owner, you would, uh, it would be up to your um, motivation to do the right thing to make those kind of changes, but you wouldn't be uh, forced in any way to do those kinds of practices on your property. Mm -hmm. okay. Another one is uh, seawalls. Uh, you know, on an inland lake, as opposed to the Great Lakes, like Michigan, you really don't need a hardened seawall made of steel, wood, or concrete to prevent erosion. A lot of times bioengineering or even riprap can help uh, mitigate some of the erosion problems. Uh, but this ordinance, uh, sorry ordinance, but uh, provisions would strongly discourage the use of building new seawalls and adding to the 15 seawalls that we already have on our lake today. Mm. Yeah, like Rob said, they're just, they, they don't really belong on inland lakes. Um, I think uh, there's so many other things that we can do 
uh, but it wouldn't require anyone who has an existing structure to spend time or money um, taking that out. Um, yeah. So okay. that brings up that concept of grandfathering. Even though I'm a grandfather, it doesn't mean I have a, a grandson, Blaze. <laughs> what it means is uh, if, if you are not in compliance with the overlay today, you're not going to be obligated to make major changes. This is all about long-term future development around Glen Lake to protect it. Mm -hmm. So would this watershed overlay district place a, a burden on the existing townships in our community? Well, you know, this uh, task force that we put together included uh, our local zoning administrators, and they've had a chance to look at this overlay district as, it, as mm -hmm. it's been crafted and proposed, and they don't see it as overreaching, overbearing, and unenforceable. They really are buying into it. Yeah, the words that the words that I um, realistic, reasonable, and enforceable. Those are three key words to any any sort of, sort of a project like this. And because those folks that that, that deal with this, you know, on the ground, day to day, um, uh, were, have been involved in this process. Uh, the like I said earlier, um, I think they they they're welcoming something like this because it would actually make their job easier to have a more uniform. Um, set of uh, regulations that they'd have that they'd be that they'd be working with to guide property owners and um, developers and things like that so yeah and Laura to your point earlier this helps uh, preserve not just the water quality but the land values as well and that's important mm -hmm. because you know what do we have if, if Glen Lake turns uh, to a green lake and it's become overpopulated over polluted we got all these uh, runoff problems, and, it, and, and, and the lake goes to uh, much like the mediocre lakes of, of Michigan, and it's not as pristine. What's the value of your property? This is a real, uh, not just a love for water, but it's a, a property value uh, insurance plan as well. Mm -hmm. Good. So what's next? Well, Trish, what do we want to do? We want to get the word out, don't we, that uh, this is something that we want people to chew on. We want feedback. We don't want to just jam this down people's throats. We've been actually working on this for three years. We're going mm -hmm. careful and we're moving methodically forward. And uh, we want to get the word out. We want to get feedback. And we want to make sure that when we go into the stages of the planning commission meetings in the fall, and then subsequently the township board meetings, where this will hopefully be uh, enacted in its entirety on all four townships, that uh, people will say, this is, this is exactly what I heard about. I'm expecting this to be the case, and there's no surprises. No surprises. And, and we've got a wide variety of resources for people to get more information. We have, we have, we're going to have this video. We have uh, a PowerPoint that's... Uh, really detailed about a 17 minute long video with narration with some slides that give that get down into the the meat of um, this overlay district proposal and we also have a, a podcast you can listen to uh we're going to have a survey we definitely like rob said we need your input um and we have a you know some supplemental reading materials as well that can be found on the glen lake association website I will add one more thing, and that is that uh, the townships have financially contributed to the hiring of a consultant from Grand Rapids who's a real uh, ace in the hole when it comes to understanding the intricacies and the technicalities of an overlay district. So he'll be joining those planning commission meetings and giving advice uh, objectively and uh, let the, the townships chew on it. And as I say, I hope by December, it's, it's a Christmas present that uh, we get this overlay district. And then finally, it's a gift that keeps on giving because, you know, that, that overlay district in the Crystal Lake area, it's 25 years old and it still keeps giving back because it's protecting the groundwater and the surface water. And I, as a you know, a property owner, I I'm not a I'm not on the water. I'm an uplander. Yeah, you know, um, I live in a heavily wooded, steep sloped property, 
that's just as, por as important if, in protecting the vegetation that's on that property for future generations and protecting the water quality and my property value. And I want this beautiful place to be here for my kids and for, for their kids. Uh, so I, this is just something that um, I think everybody can get behind, no matter where you are in the watershed. Um, it's the right thing to do and um, so many great advantages now and for the future. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Trish and Rob, thank you for explaining what a watershed overlay district is and why you think it would be beneficial to our watershed. Uh, we look forward to learning more about this topic in the coming months. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Trish.